Hello and welcome to stream 2 of Heaven's Vaults. I'm Zilla and this is Ancient Gaming. The story so far of Heaven's Vault. Aaliyah and her new robot Six are on the trail of a missing roboticist, Janiki Renba. Last seen on the farming moon of Mercy, it seems he left something behind to be found. Unfortunately, we are having some technical difficulties, so Tortoise, who is taking notes, uh, does not have his microphone active. We're going to fix that for next time, but we just spent, I think, a good ten minutes trying to figure it out. I don't know what changed between this time and last. Um, so if you have any puzzle-building questions, let me know and I will ask. So, just to catch you up, if you weren't with us last time, Heaven's Vault is my possibly favorite ever video game in which the uh, main mechanics are conversation and epigraphy. We play a grad student, Aaliyah, who is an archaeologist and historical linguist of a type. Philologist, if you will. And I sometimes will, <laughs> since I have a degree in it. Um, and we are trying to understand what happened to the nebula. So let's go. Feel free to say hello in chat. If there are any other audio problems that you're noticing, please let me know. I have no I Nothing should have changed since last time, but... Let's go. So here we are on Mercy. It is. We've just talked a lot about this place. It seems to have left before we left the moon. So if there are no robots, why are there ramps everywhere? Iox uses robots to collect produce from protector moons. Okay. And, uh, seems like it would be easy to stop the robots taking anything. Pull up a few walkways and put them in some stones. I cannot imagine that making any difference. Robots are versatile. Then why are there ramps everywhere? Maybe they just want to be accessibility friendly. Like a smart society. So every time that we move between moons, we get a little look at our timeline. And... I don't think we need anything right now. Let's just head on out. Renba left a crystal for Mayari to find, but what was he trying to tell her? So we found an artifact, an Iolite crystal, and it seemed to match the radiology signature of the brooch that was left for Mayari to find. I'm quite certain in my analysis, mistress, the crystal we found inside the brooch, they originate from a moon somewhere on the edge of the cyclones. It's a dangerous wild. But there's nothing there but clouds and storms. I'm aware of that, mistress. I wonder, what exactly did Renba discover? I think we'd better find out, right? Put out the sails, six. Let's go. I love the sailing idea for space travel. Six had us falling a lead to moon someone somewhere from Mercy, but I don't know enough to find this site yet. So we could just sail. Let's go. To the waters of the nebula. Which really do seem to be waters. Sailing to the Iolite moon. from the Verdant Pass, which if you remember is uh, so named for fairly obvious reasons. 
Either of these rivers leads to our destination, mistress. All right, well, let the water take me whichever way it will, then. Are there other ships on the rivers, mistress? I've not seen any. There are other ships out here. But you rarely see them. Everyone goes at the same speed. So no one ever passes by you. People who like people stay on the ground. <laughs> you do not like people, mistress? That explains a lot. Tell me. Is there anything you do like? Don't worry, we can't run aground. Huang's alright, I suppose. Really? I got the impression she didn't like him. Miari wants me to marry him. Oh, maybe that's why she doesn't like him. But if I did that, I wouldn't stay on Iox. Steer left. Okay. Not so difficult. You see the rivers flow into one another. They only flow in one direction. What are the rivers, Six? Flows of oxygen, hydrogen, ice. Their velocity keeps them coherent. So why do the rivers wind? Why aren't they straight? I do not know, mistress. Why does water swirl when mixed with wine? It's an odd metaphor. It sounds almost classical. Evidently, it is most mysterious. Our path turns right ahead, mistress, and so should we. If you do ever miss a turn in this game, it will uh, give you an opportunity to reset to before you missed it. But you can also just check the map and sail around. Six, how long were you buried on Iox? I have no idea, mistress. I do not remember it. And you don't know why you were buried? No, mistress. Ah, we're somewhere near the Iolite moon? I can only assume I was not needed. Our data suggests the Iolite moon is close at hand. One thing I really like about the sailing that you can't see from here is that there is a little rumble in your sailing. There's a rock up ahead. What have we found? Oh, I guess we uh, hit it on the first try. Why would anyone come to a lonely spot like this? We have arrived, mistress. The moon below us is rich in purple iolite crystals, but there is no surface flow. We cannot land the ship. Remba must have gotten down somehow. Indeed, most likely he used a hopper. We might do the same. A hopper? The nightingale is fitted with a hopper, of course, for instantaneous travel, so we have beam me down. How does it work? There is a source. Source fires at a subject and casts it into the hopper's eye. The eye retracts the signal and is focused and reconstituted. But how does it work? I have no idea whatsoever. Is it safe? Not really, mistress. No. This moon does not have any air. I will have to go down alone. But you're sure the Iolite crystal came from here? Statistically certain. 
The moon is rich in deposits of iolite. Please wait here. Just don't take too long. Oh, we're letting six beam down alone. A moment later, the robot was gone. And I was alone in the dark. wonder if the hopper worked. Can't see anything moving down there. So the quickest you've lost a robot yet, Aaliyah. If I flew away now, I could be rid of that thing. Ah, too late. <laughs> I almost wondered if we could. I found something. A tool chest? an engineer's chest. Let's go look. Was this Janiki's? Well, probability's high. I believe the moon below us was once a quarry, but this box is no artifact. I hope there isn't a snake in there. Speaking of statistically unlikely. A roll of cloth. Thick fabric. Janiki, what is this? Some kind of robe? but it's hundreds of years old. There's something stitched along the belt. Tiny characters picked out in darker thread. Oh, here we go! Here's the fun bit. Okay. So we're on to the language bit. Let's look at this inscription. It is pleasantly divided into words. Um, yes. So... So we have a good feeling, or I happen to know from, from my longer experience with this, that this language that's written in ideographs, in symbols that actually have some relation to meaning. But we don't know much about specifics yet. So here we have a circle in these four lines. And then we've got some related words up there. It looks like, you know, we've got pieces of God and holy. Um, a glyph that kind of looks like water with a, I don't know, maybe a mountain on top. And then last, we've got this odd little short word. It almost doesn't look like a word. So the thing we know the most about is going to be in the center. Um, it's... The, the end of this word could almost be broken off into God but it's combined with something longer. Um, personally, I think that sort of curl with a leg on the other side seems an awful lot like person, like as an ideograph. That's always what it's reminded me of. So I think this is some kind of person which eliminates our projection of drinks. Um, so we could have we, we could have soldiers, we could have pilgrims. Now, as for we, it is possible to have a complicated word for a concept like a pronoun. Um, a pronoun, by the way, for non-grammaticists, is a word that refers to people without giving them a name or... Uh, you know, a name or, or a specific category. So like I, you, we, she, they, any of those, they're all pronouns. Um, these are very common words across languages. Um, I've yet to encounter a language that does not have them. Uh, although there are languages that do not use them as frequently as English, like Japanese, for example, very rarely uses its pronouns unless it is completely ambiguous as to who you're talking about or you want to make a point. Um, but 
generally speaking, even in those languages, the pronouns are not this complex. Um, and especially for an ideogram, you would think it would be a much simpler concept. Oh, hello, Steve. I'm glad to see you here. Thanks for coming. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. Feel free to chime in. And let me know if, if the audio is okay for you. Um, <clears throat> so, so it's unlikely that this is the pronoun we. It could be, but it's unlikely. So we can kind of get rid of that. So we're left with soldiers and pilgrims. And since we know that the end of this word... <laughs> thanks. Since we know that the end of this word is the same as goddess, it's much more likely to be about worship than it is to be about war. So, oops, wrong button. So I'm going to go with pilgrims. Now, we don't have a lot to go on for these two short words at either end. But, you know... I think that we're more likely to be getting a sense of, you know, like we have to think about the context. This is on a robe. So if this is a pilgrim's robe, this is not going to be, you know, sort of a, a vague, like, something something you know huge and and part of a, a larger concept this is going to be something relevant to the ceremony the robe was used for so let's think about pilgrims what pilgrims emperors doesn't make a lot of sense i mean emperors pilgrims could but we know what emperor looks like we've used that word before and that's a lot more complicated. This doesn't have a person. Um, pilgrims weaker. That doesn't make sense in context on the robe. Pilgrims follow could make sense. Uh, pilgrims together also makes sense. So if we have um, sort of like if we're looking at all pilgrims together, gather pilgrims together, many pilgrims follow those can all work so uh it looks like it looks like tortoise has an idea <laughs> so for the last word um the difference between follow and together we have a hunch that the sort of two commas next to each other like in the third symbol of pilgrims is a verb marker but this doesn't have a verb marker right so uh so Tortoise is saying that, you know, we had this idea that maybe the, the, the little two commas at the front of a word marks a verb, and as you can see, for both buried and shine are verbs that it might be related to above, they do have that, and this does not. So that kind of, at least theoretically, eliminates follow. And uh, Steve, who, uh, for those who don't know, is one of the playtesters of this game, um, thank you so much for coming to watch, Steve. This is great. Oh, you can hear him. Oh, that's great. Uh, let me see if I can turn his audio any higher, because we are having trouble with his mic. Um, so, um, so he says, oh, you think you're hearing him over my mic. Okay, <laughs> well, we'll see what I can do about that. I'll, I'll turn mine up and try not to speak so loudly. <laughs> um, thanks, many pink cats. Um, okay, so so PVB UK, which is Steve, says lots of players get very into ancient translating, writing notes, syllable dictionaries, etc. Uh, which is, of course, what Tortoise is doing. Um, would you show off the the book, the the book we got with our swag, which I'm very excited about. So um, when Steve was playtesting, he just tended to use bits that made sense in context. And really, both are relevant ways of doing this. So <coughs> with our knowledge, uh, oops, wrong button, we think together makes the sense. So again, <laughs> thanks. 
still do, says Steve. Um, so with our with our previous statement that okay maybe those little two commas mark a verb we can eliminate gather right so this could be with many all now i'm thinking of those four marks there as sort of like a number so i think many or all is probably right maybe that circle is something definitive so that's that's going to be my guess and we might be proven wrong so what do we think of that, Aaliyah? I could still change my mind, but all pilgrims together. A ceremonial robe, I suppose. There's more in here. This is a ceramic cup for drinking. It's beautifully preserved. The inside is heavily stained. It must have belonged to a heavy drinker. No writing around the bottom, but it can't be from the same set as the robe. In fact, I don't think we've seen anything like that cup before. So this originates from somewhere new I never knew existed. So I just want to pause because I know that my options are going to go away. Uh, Steve says, I got my special editions yesterday too after paying lots of import charges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy about all the swag. Um, if you want to go back and see the first stream I did on this, I actually did a full unboxing. Um... So, so I just want to talk about this cup and the way that Aaliyah reacts to it. She's examining the construction. She calls out that it's ceramic. She looks at its condition. It's incredibly well preserved, so no chips. Um, if there's paint on it, which she didn't mention, but like whatever coloring it has has not been eroded. Um, but it does have a lot of stains around the inside. And she says whoever whoever used it must have been a heavy drinker. And so that says to me that she culturally associates this kind of cup with alcohol. Um, although, like, that's not a certainty. Um, so it's very possible that this cup was, you know, s was used over a long period of time and then left on an airless moon. <laughs> and preserved. Um, but there are no inscriptions. But that's not all. What else have we got? There's also a fragment of sail. How did Renbug get his hands on all this? The fabric has been embroidered with symbols. The fact that embroidery is surviving, I mean, this these conditions out here are so good for preservation. <laughs> um, <coughs> so before I get into this inscription, I just, I, you know, a lot of times fabrics do not survive hundreds of years. Sometimes they do, but it can be very hard on them, especially if they are getting used for anything along the way. So this is a fragment of sail, like we see on the front of Aaliyah's boat. And that speaks to something in heavy use. The fact that there's embroidery at all is pretty outrageous to me. Because <laughs> first of all, you wouldn't want to poke holes in a sail to embroider it. But second of all, that seems like the kind of things that, uh, that would deteriorate fairly quickly, even if it were a ceremonial sail, for instance, that never got used on a boat. Um, and Steve points out, Several runes and moons have little to no oxygen, which helps preservation, which is exactly where I was going with this. The conditions out in the nebula are spectacular for preservation. In the real world, when we look at archaeological artifacts like this, low humidity and a dry heat are kind of the best optimal conditions. That's why we have a lot of stuff from Egypt. Okay, so let's take a look at this embroidered line. Um, looks like we do not have our spaces this time. Very realistic. So how do we think we can break it up? Um, I, it gives us several suggestions, but I actually don't see most of them in here at all. The only one that... Oops. Oh, rats. Oh, the 
buttons on this confound me. I've been playing a different game, and they're opposite. So what are these leads? What are these things Renbo was after? Just wait, I will consider the matter. Um, can you work out where the robe originated? I fear so. It's not a good location, mistress, but Professor Mayari was keen that we found Master Renba, and I'm sure that Master Renba is equally keen to be found. Show me. I'm not exactly certain, mistress, but I believe Renba traveled far from home, into the eye of the cyclones. Most likely the winds there tore him apart. So we have some options at this point. <clears throat> we can go look at the inscriptions, which I kind of want to do because I pressed the wrong button, <laughs> and I want to see if we have any hope of translating this one. Um, so light seems like the only thing we've really got here. Oh, shine also fits. Yeah. Although I'm not sure that is shine. I'm not sure it is either. Because light seems to have the, the three lines, seems to be very indicative of light, and I expect shine to use a similar symbol. Yeah, I don't know if you could hear that at all, but Torres was saying that we're not really sure about the, the choice of shine because light seems to have those three rays, which is why I chose that one. Um, and shine does not have that. So, so it's very likely that we're going to find out that we need to rethink that one. But you know what does have those three rays is this word that we are now given in the middle. So... Um, we have... Again, we have a pronoun, a possessive pronoun, yours. I don't think that's likely. We don't. It's a little complex. It has those those three lines that we're identifying as having to do with light. And we have two ideas for related to the stars. And if you're looking at an ideograph, one thing that you can kind of try to suss out is like what is going on with its construction? How would you write it? What might that convey? And that last ideograph, a radical there, to me that speaks of something high up. So I like that this could be star. Um, I don't know whether it's possessive, which is, you know, the apostrophe S there or plural. Um, I do like, you know, we have in our comparable word up there, in together, we have that inverted comma at the beginning, and maybe that's a possessive. That could be a possessive. Um, and like, if we do have light here, the star's possessive light makes sense. And this was on a fragment of sail, so having to do with space makes sense. And then doesn't make any sense either to me. I was like, this is, this is a bit too complex. Um, although, again, we could say it's comparable to, to what we've designated as together, which, you know, maybe, maybe not those kind of adverbs, um, things that, you know, affect the words around them can be complicated, but I'm going to go with stars. I would like to also um, point out that we have been assuming that the word order is similar to English. Yes, a good, a good point. We've been assuming that the word order is similar to English, and it's true that that is not a safe assumption at all. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I've talked about this before. The idea that something like Latin or Ancient Greek, they don't really ha use word order in the same way. It doesn't convey meaning. The endings of the words convey meaning. Um, so... But, but given this is, that this is a 
puzzle that is meant to be solved, they're probably going to provide some familiar cues. Right. So we're having to weigh our knowledge of existing world languages and how we know that such things can operate against, as Tortoise was saying, the need for somebody crafting a puzzle or a game to give cues so that it is solvable. Um, which is why we start off with guesses at all, I think. Because, of course, you can't decipher a language from nowhere. You always have to have something to work from. So, for instance, if you've ever heard of linear A and linear B. So, these are two writing systems that, uh, that occur in the Cyclades, um, the islands of the Aegean that are part of, mostly part of Greece, um, and, and on Crete. Um, and one of them has been deciphered and one has not. Linear B was deciphered not all that long ago in the scape of things. It's, uh, I think, been 60 years? 1950s or 60s. It was in the 1950s or 60s. So, yeah, 60, 70 years. <laughs> um, uh, somebody was... Uh, I can't remember his name. Do you remember his name? Yeah, you can look this up. I, I don't have his name on hand, but but the, a particular scholar noticed a pattern in linear B script that matched a known ancient Greek word if you adapt it to a syllabary instead of an alphabet, so something that provides a full syllable instead of just one sound. And syllabaries are very common. Um, if you read Japanese, if you look at, you know, Hittite cuneiform, Akkadian, anything like that. So that's... He recognized the word basileu, or basileus, which means king in ancient Greek. And from there he was able to sort of decipher what was going on with linear B. But no one has known what to do with linear A. It doesn't seem to match up. It is different. And we just don't have enough. We don't have an in. <laughs> and maybe someday someone will decipher it, but you know, we would need some kind of key, some kind of match or in, and probably a lot more context, because a lot of linear A is, I mean, first of all, it's very short fragment fragments. There are not a lot of of extant pieces of it. And the context is not really helpful because it seems to be used for bookkeeping and storerooms. Um, so it could just be lists of items without any grammar at all. Isn't, Go ahead. Isn't it also the case that it may very well be a language that we know nothing about? Yeah, and we don't know what language it is. <laughs> like that's, you know, we, it, it's, it's quite possible that it's something that was spoken nearby or some uh, some language isolate that has disappeared otherwise from our histories there are so many possibilities so the creators of this conlang over at inkle had to give us a way to start and that's why you come in with Aaliyah's sort of mental suggestions the related words and the ones that she already kind of seems to guess. Um, so from a puzzle standpoint, you have to have an in, or you're not going to be able to do anything. So that's all we get to do for now. Uh, oh, do we have any solvable inscriptions? Oh, we do. Let's take a look. OK. Good. Oh, I see. Unsolved. Solved. All. Okay, so that's it. That's all we got. So, uh, pan select zoom. Zoom. Where are we headed? So, we could sail back to Iox. Or we could head to the Eye of the Cyclones, try to find something new. We could head to Elbereth, 
see what we can do from there. There's even this market moon where she's never been. I don't know why we start knowing where that is. Maybe that's just the maps of the major waterways. Any votes from chat? <laughs> I'm, I am interested in the cyclones. Um, Steve says, yes, and agreed on the initial words and Aaliyah's suggestion, including context. And later on, 6 acts as a faster memory retrieval system for confirming the translations. Yeah. So, um, from a testing point of view, you definitely need that mechanically. Um, okay, so we've got a, a vote for the Cyclones. I'm gonna go there. Let's go see what's out there. Yeah, plot a course. Come on, do the thing. Look, we've got only one choice. Hi. My cat, in case you were curious, is asking for pets as we sail into the eye of the cyclone. I've been analyzing the purple row we found in the tool chest, mistress. Fabric appears to be of significant age. Well, how significant? Hold on, Six. I cannot hold on, mistress. Yeah, Six has no hands. We're in one piece? Yes, we appear to be. So yes, as, as I was saying, the there's a little rumble when we get into a current, and it's just really good. Uh, kind of robe that we need a brooch to hold it. It's a good question. Indeed it is, mistress. I would go so far as to say I can detect the pinholes, mistress. So again, that idea of fabric and holes, and why I think that was probably some kind of ceremonial sale. I find it interesting that um, Aaliyah is sort of passing these things off to sex because it seemed like her interest was more in the material culture to begin with. Yeah, so I don't know if you could hear Tortoise. Uh, but he was saying that it's interesting that Six is the one doing the material analysis since it seems like Aaliyah was more interested in material culture, which is, you know, the actual artifacts, than the uh, philo philological side. Um, although, you know, there's not such a divide in this world, and oftentimes I wonder why there's such a divide at all. Uh, in our studies. It seems to me that Six is uh, close to the eye of the cyclones now. I'm just gonna drift around unless I see something. We'll have to choose and explore. Yep, that's fine. Or not choose. Let the water take us where it will. Um, yeah, let's view possible search locations. That actually sounds pretty good. Uh, oh, looks like there's not much to, to choose. <laughs> but it's a good point to pause. Um, so, there is in scholarship a, a very sharp divide sometimes between the people who study language and literature and philology and the people who study material culture and archaeology. And I think that's kind of an artificial divide. I mean, all, all such things are semi-artificial. Um, like, where is the line between math and, ph and physics? Where is the line between chemistry and biology, right? Like, but... I do think that there should be more crossover in the study because language doesn't exist without context, without people, and what we have left of the people is the material objects, the material culture. And I honestly wish I knew more about material culture, which is part of why I find archaeology and games so fascinating, because I, as, as a 
philologist and linguist feel like I so often need to look into the material culture to understand what's being said. Um, and it makes sense to me that six and presumably any robot that Aaliyah had would be very good at the analysis portion of the material objects in terms of a tool. Uh, six can analyze the radiation signatures, can you know zoom in and find the pinholes, can do uh, presumably radiocarbon dating, things like that, which Aaliyah as a human being without external tools could not, but at the same time Six is not the one making the analysis that the drinking vessel is stained from alcohol or that the robe is a pilgrim's robe. That's Aaliyah. And so I don't think these things are as separate as all that. Um, Aaliyah has a good background of knowledge, but you can't do everything by yourself. Um, and Steve says, uh, some AAA devs provide QA with entire narratives, puzzle solutions, etc. from the start, but games I've worked on, like this one, have just gone in blind and figured stuff out as they go. Yeah, I think there are some really interesting cultural differences, as it were, between sort of indie games and AAA. Um, I wonder what you think, Steve, about which of those works better for testing. Um, I like going in blind when I'm streaming, but like I, I don't know that I would agree if I were testing. All the same, I, I have a good friend who just loves to try and break games for fun. So, you know, I don't know. And then also, the books se certainly seem to expand on Aaliyah's thoughts and the need for historical validation, specifically on what's in the books that's not in the game. Uh, thank you for no spoilers. Yes, I have the books and I have read part of them and oh, they're wonderful and yeah, I'm going to be reading them uh, in full at some point, but um, but not for this stream. <laughs> uh, although if, if y'all want me to, to do some reading out loud at some point, I might. Anyway, let's get back to... The, I mean, there's really only one way to go here. There's something up ahead. A moon? There is air, but no upriver. We will need to leave the ship here and hop her down. Do not be alarmed, it's quite safe. You just said it wasn't safe, Six! It wasn't safe on the other moon because there was no air. Tori says it wasn't safe on the other moon because there was no air. I'm not sure how confident I feel about this hoppering. So, Steve said, for me, I've been allowed to just wing it, but the latest game had to set bits to test and uh, and things with, such as achievements to check, etc. with how to do them. So, you prefer to wing it. Understandable. Understandable. So, will Remba be waiting fire, here? For a this... I was gone. Not aboard the Nightingale, not on the moon beneath. It could have been a heartbeat or an hour. Hello, Hoppered in. But I didn't feel the cold until I reappeared. A pile of rocks smashed together by the waters. Seems Janiki had a taste for places like this. I wonder why. Perhaps he did not like people. This way, then. I hope he'll be pleased to see us. Do you think we'll find him? I prefer to believe that we will. I would like to meet him again. I do not remember him well. Perhaps Rimba is waiting for us just around the corner. We can hopper him back to the Nightingale, and this part of my life will be done. Perhaps, mistress, perhaps. We can only hope. Hold it! Six, what is that? Here, in the middle of the hurricane, there was a house. It was fine. Tucked in below the overhanging rock. Wooden beams, mud brick walls, shutters. Not enough for two families to argue over. It would have been measly on Iox and grand on Elbereth. But here, it was impossible. So 
Someone built this. Buildings do not occur naturally, mistress. Why, thank you. How did Janiki find it? I hope we can ask him, mistress. So robots are capable of hope? Certainly. We calculate odds, of course. But even the most likely outcomes must always eventually occur. Hope is a mathematical certainty. Now there is a statement. I like that. Mathematics do not care whether you like it or not, miss. <laughs> Such sass. Oh, let's talk about this building. We have um, what I think of as sort of a, a desert construction. Like you get these flat roofs in places where it doesn't rain much. Is this Renba's secret? Was this place stuffed full of robots or something? I find that unlikely. Um, we have full arches and wood supports, which, you know, given that there's a tree here, is not bad. There are no ramps anywhere, so this is not a place for robots. Not very accessible friendly. Uh, six is a sarcastic git. It's true. That's okay. I am too. Um, but this is, this is pretty advanced construction. I could vault over the wall here. Please, mistress. The floor beyond would only give way beneath you. Would it, though? Floor looks like stone to me, Six, so it is heavy and more likely to fall. That's not really how architecture works. Maybe that's what happened to Renba. He fell through a hole in the floor. You see any other way in? No, neither do I. In we go. Aaliyah is not the most athletic. Now where did the robot go? But, uh, look at this place, Aaliyah. No one would live here. They couldn't. Or could they? But yeah, there's so much wood in this construction, which is really unusual for this area because there seems to be a lot of desert. Um, but there is this tree and some kind of structure. The plinth inside looks like a shrine. Might help me date this place, figure out what it's supposed to be. So what she's talking about here is that building you can kind of see in the distance. And she says it looks like a shrine. That's from her knowledge of the culture that she's studying in the past. Because you can't just guess that. You don't know what things are. Lots of wood. It must have been brought here. Must it have? There's a tree. Brought from Mercy, maybe? Um, in initial testing, I swung the camera around quickly after she vaults over the wall so I could si see six on the lower level. Oh, that's cute. So so what Steve's getting here at here is that six just went ahead and just phew, right off that edge. Um, why build something as big as this out here? What was it for? Who was it for? So we do have ceramic pots. Um, she's commenting on the wood, Ghost which is good. Is still here. Cooking, reading, doing whatever ghosts do. The house was empty, but it hadn't been abandoned. Empty, but not abandoned. Um. Oh. <laughs> So, so uh, Steve is saying that they uh, they fixed that. That was not supposed to be visible to the viewer. So, oh, door is locked or blocked or both. Um, we've got another outside. We can go up a level. Ruin and rubble. So the top of the house has been destroyed. We can kind of... Ooh, there's a glint among the stones. Let's check that out. What have we found? Something wedged here, a solid brass box. Looks like something from the Ioxian Empire, and the lid has been inscribed with glyphs. I wonder if we can make it out. 
start of a fragment of text. And I see light. So light and some other word. Now it's got those two initial comma looking things, which we're guessing for now means a verb, so it's probably not rivers. Um, we have follow, look, or hold. Now this is on a box, so hold would make sense, but how do you hold light? Uh, yeah, Steve, I have played this before. This is, I'm playing as a new player because this is the cartridge version anyway. <laughs> But I did want people to see the the sort of the way in. Um, what he's getting at there is that there is a long series of New Game Plus. And when you play again, you retain your previous knowledge of the language each time. And the world changes underneath you a bit. Subtly at first, but you start to notice the more times you play. <laughs> Yeah, and because because your knowledge of the language retains, you don't just get the same inscriptions over and over, you get them more complicated, longer. So when you see something like, this is the start of a longer inscription, you might actually get to see that. <laughs> Steve says, early streams wind me up because of the amount of things players miss. I mean there's always going to be stuff to miss. This world is full of artifacts and conversations, and you, I don't think you can do all of them in a single run. Um, so there's so much to know and so much to see. This game is very deep. How many times... <laughs> how many times have you played this, Steve? <laughs> Used to backseat play a lot. Used to. <laughs> um, so we don't have anything like that. Uh, that little middle bit here. Um, so I don't think it's going to be too close to anything that we know already. But our options, look, follow, and hold, are not really distinct at this point. Um, so follow the light, I guess is possible. Look at the light, certainly a logical thing to do, but I don't know, something about it being on a box makes me want to say it's hold. Any thoughts? Could be anything. Don't tell me, Steve. <laughs> okay, so let's continue. Hold light. I suppose this stored ritual pieces once, long lost now. And there's something inside. A shredded book bound in wood? Oh, that's fascinating. Box is bigger than I expected. If it can hold a book of that size. It doesn't really look shredded, but I guess that's an excuse for us not to be able to read the inside. Over 200 hours testing, then at least New Game Plus 8 on PC and New Game Plus 6 on PS4. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is a lot of times through this game, Steve. So we have some words in here that seem pretty good. Holy seems like it's right there. Waters, nice and uh, plain, and then... We have a suggestion of reclaim all. Now this looks pretty good, actually. I'm feeling confident about my translation of waters now. And this you will find as she goes on. Reclaim must be correct, too. Okay, we were right about that. Certain of all as well. Okay, we're doing pretty good. Still finding new stuff and new ancient after all those hours of playing. I'm really impressed, Steve. So we've gotten this confirmed, but if we were wrong, she would have an instinctually negative reaction to that, or sometimes when six is around, six will say, that's not right. Um, so oftentimes when you have guessed a word twice or maybe three times, you will get this sort of feedback, and this adds to your ongoing dictionary. 
So it turns out we were right about all of these. And I have seen them before, but it was over a year ago. So it's been a bit. Um, so the Holy Waters Reclaim All. And we haven't really talked about this, but we'll find that this actually is a very common sentiment in this world. So Aaliyah would know that this makes a lot of sense in context, um, which might be part of why she can declare this is correct, but also on a mechanical level, we need some way to confirm that we're actually doing the translation correctly. <coughs> the holy waters reclaim all. If only we could read the whole volume, but alas, it is shredded and a new site is indicated. It comes from the same place as the box, that makes sense. So, I wanted to sort of look around. Looks like this is damaged by a simple boulder fall, not anything more ominous, but who knows what was in that room. It looks like a bookshelf. I would love to go see, but I doubt we can get in there. What is this? quite different from the rest of the building, some kind of telescope, but the position and bearings are fixed. The material on this is totally wrong. Is it metal? Rubber? It looks like something Oroi might have built. I must remember to ask her about that. And there are scratches on the top here. Something fitted inside the frame and it was removed by force. Did you take something, Janiki? And if so, what was it meant to hold? Is that smoke? It's definitely smoke. Remba, are you here? Remba! Oh, didn't think that would work. No. So, I mean, of course there's something over there. Can't make it out from here, though. Looks like wreckage. Could be old. Uh, but it is smoking, so probably not. But we got some some interesting clues, I think, about this stand. She comments on the material it's made of. She comments on the wear on it. So if you've watched any of my other gaming streams, you'll have heard me talk about this kind of stuff before. Like, does it fit the surroundings? Do the materials seem local? Is there wear on it? What kind of wear is it? And she also says it's something that her friend Oroi could have built. We don't know who that is yet in this playthrough, but we will meet her at some point. So it's obvious Aaliyah cannot get through that door with all this wreckage. Oh, I would love to see what's in those cabinets, but I don't think we can get over there. Um, so I'm going to walk back down. Just don't look down. She doesn't like heights. Better go and find where Six got to. Well, must I? What's in here? Another ruined room. A rough bed. Hardly comfortable. Whoever built this place wasn't worried about making it cozy. Ooh, an inscription. It's old, barely visible, scratched into the plaster. So the building is old, but still in use. So we have that, that person symbol, and it is a short word, a simple word. Um, we don't have a lot of context here, but we can at least eliminate and. This has our verb marker, and a whole bunch of stuff that we have not seen before. Um, so it's not going to be and. <laughs> uh, guarded, we don't know how past look. See, fear, those are both verbs. Um, and then our last word uh, has a lot of the same characters as the previous word and not a lot from anything else. But again, with the 
person, so probably not death. Probably. <clears throat> so, I don't think this is likely to be master. It could be. It absolutely could be, but I feel like we would see something more to that. That's a complicated concept. Yeah. Yeah. So Steve is saying that it's unusual for these writings to come with spaces written in, which, which, I mean, we've talked about in my previous stream, a lot of these do not have spaces, and that's very common in in more ancient writing um and that makes this less likely to have been somebody from the most distant past um so this could be r it could be i personally i would expect a more multiple looking like when we had many we had those four slashes this is just a curve and a dot so i'm gonna go with i this one's more complicated we know it's a verb or we think we know it's a verb um and i feel like that little x symbol is gonna be not it's going to be something negative. We had it in buried, and um, this is one of those ideographs that probably would not realistically be found in a completely different civilization. Because that is not a universal symbol. That is not an obvious symbol. Um, but I think as an ideograph in a game meant for people to solve, it's probably going to be some kind of negative. Um... And we're going to see some commonality between this word and this word. So, we have anything for guard? I don't really see it. C? That feels like it should be simpler. And there's nothing here. Fear. It could be related to stranger, I suppose. I don't know. I genuinely don't remember. Well, let's let's say fear. Let's say fear. Um, and this is this isn't an a hidden moon. Maybe it's I fear the strangers. I fear strangers. I. Uh, it's a beautiful example of the script. That's true. Angle is interesting too. Scratched by someone lying down. Maybe it was death after all. No clues from Steve. Yes, thank you, Steve. <laughs> I know how hard that must be. Um, we watched. A couple of friends play this together over on the Save Ancient Studies Alliance uh, Archeo Gaming Twitch, and both of us were just biting our tongues the whole time. It was great. <laughs> okay, so there's a hole downstairs, but it is after four, so I think this is where we're going to stop for the day. Thank you so much for coming along. We'll be doing this again next week. And uh, presumably most Saturdays at 3 o'clock Eastern. Keep learning, friends. Have a good day.